capturing like that feel. You know what I'm saying? But we could do that pretty easily in Incarnate. Hold on. Do, do, do. Well, at least Incarnate remembered uh, who I was. All right. So create a new map. We'll do a fantasy battle map. And we'll make it 4K. And we will do, I don't know, 50 by 50. And we will explain that we understand how dangerous making maps in Incarnate is. And we'll let it grind that out. Uh, that was fast. All right. And this is just a big water map, so shouldn't be too bad. Uh, let's see. It is blue. There are some hands, and there are some chains, and there is a big whirlpool. Doesn't seem like it's going to be that hard. Here we go. Go to the paint. We're in the background. We're going to go grab some water. Um, that's some dark-ass water right there. That is some dark-ass seawater. Let's go with the dark ass seawater and see how it looks. Um, we're gonna go to advanced settings. We're gonna lower the size a bit to there. Uh, let's see, we're gonna zoom out. And for brush, we're just gonna drop it on top of the whole thing. Okay. And then let's see, I'm gonna rotate it. And I'm gonna change the size. And we're going to lower the opacity this time. And we're going to make it darker. There we go. And we're going to lay that right over the top of what we had before to really churn that water up. And darken it as well. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. All right. Then we're going to go to our Stampos. And we're going to look for a Whirlpool which they already have. And we're gonna make this whirlpool a very big to like dominate the map a bit. So that's as big as it will let me go, actually. All right, so put that down. And I guess, let's see what we could do. Um, if we make it normal, it'd be nice and stark like that. And we'll put another one on top. Twist it a little bit. There we go. Uh, and which website and which app do you make maps? I like to use Incarnate. I will often say that Dungeon Draft is a faster program for making maps if you are willing to learn how to use it. But it doesn't change the fact that I really like using um, Incarnate. Incarnate is very similar to Photoshop, and Photoshop is my absolute um, go-to program. I've been using it since I was a little baby. So for me, it's just always going to be easier to do uh, something that's similar to Photoshop. Um, but I know in my heart that you could probably get some very cool maps very quickly using Dungeon Draft. But I, I use Incarnate. World Anvil, um, I don't know, does World Anvil have map tools? I, I've never actually looked at World Anvil for, for really anything, so. Um, I've used Kanka before, which is like off-brand World Anvil, I guess, but I've never personally bothered with, um, with World Anvil. Okay, so we've got this guy, it's looking pretty good. We're gonna go back to the paint and we're going to grab something really dark like this dark water here and we'll grab a brush and let's see we'll try to make the brush bigger and we'll start to make this center area dark um i'll drag this opacity up a little bit so we can get this nice and dark faster and we'll go in like swirling patterns we're trying to create some depth here in the water as if it is deeper here and going deeper still down into the earth um i mean i am just starting to do dming oh okay um i don't know um world anvil is good if you're trying to build a homebrew world 
and I've heard it's pretty good for managing campaigns. Um, I just don't pers I just personally haven't had to use it or or made time to use it. So, all right. So this is getting pretty pretty dark there in the center. So that's cool. That's sort of the effect we're going for. Here's our picture that we're going off of. All right. So what else could we do to really sell this effect? Um, I know that we have been associating like teal with Lutheria. So we could grab this and then try and modify the colors a bit. Try to get like a teal going. I want to like a really bright teal. Got purple there. Almost. Let's see. Turn that saturation up. Brightness up. Oh, oh, we're almost there. There we go. All right. So I'd like to see if we could create like a glowing blue kind of down there at the bottom. That's kind of hinting at, you know, you come down here, uh, the theory are going to get you. Ooh, that's looking pretty good, actually. Yeah. All right. So we'll do less opacity, smaller brush, and do like a, a really bright core here at the center, kind of hinting at what's below. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Okay. Let's go back to... Oh, all right. Go to sleep. Good. Good. That's I'm a little jealous, but that's fine. Um, we're going to go and grab hands. And we got these Titan hands. That's a little big. Um, in the picture, they're definitely looking uh, whiter than this. So we'll go here and we'll turn the saturation down and the brightness up. There we go. And do like this. Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty cool, actually. Okay. And then here, we want to flip this one. Nice. Okay. Bring it down to, like, there. All right. So now we need chains. Um, hey, we got a chains. Good shit. All right, now these chains seem to be depicted as being black. All right, so let's go in here and try to make these black. So we're going to turn the brightness down. There we go. And contrast up so that we get that highlight. All right, that's looking dope. And this will need to go under the hands, I'm thinking. So... How best to do this this is definitely an instance where it would look be easier to do on a dungeon draft because I think you can actually draw chains on a path in dungeon draft which is is kind of awesome um, but I'm getting the same feel yeah all right and let's see we'll raise these guys up Yeah, all right. That's looking pretty slick. There we go. And going back to the chains. Uh, let's see. Coiled chain. Oof, that's an awful lot of chain. Uh, all right. Go back to this. I guess we'll just try to make it work. Um... Maybe run it across the palms. That'd be kind of cool. Alright. Um, so what we'll do is we'll select our black chains that we made. There we go. And do something like this. Yeah. Alright. And bring it over to here. Subtly turn it. 
All right, that works. And really, it's just about how we overlap it, whether it's going to look okay or not, I guess. Since there's no way to, like, crop these as um, these things. I mean, we could certainly do it in Photoshop, but it's just not the same. Okay, I think that works. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these guys. There we go. Uh, let's see. Chain, chain, chain. And we're going to go to shadow and really kind of throw a heavy shadow on there. That looks pretty good. And same thing with these chains. We'll go here and add a much heavier object based shadow. All right, that's looking dope. Okay. And then we'll go to the hands. Same deal. These have an object based one already. That's good. So what I'm thinking now is we're going to hit save. And I'm going to copy the name of it because I can't spell that off the top of my head. There we go. All right. So while that's baking, I'm going to go look at something else real quick. Yeah, it does take kind of 100 years uh, for Incarnate to save, and it doesn't like it if you minimize the window and switch to like another tab. You just kind of have to watch it save. Hmm. Now, obviously prioritizing, this was a terrible choice uh, for us to make um, because none of this shit is needed for a hot minute. Um... But that's okay. All right. So we'll go here. We got this chain. And I guess hmm, if I wanted to, I could lay this chain over these other chains. But I'm not sure that looks much better. Kind of looks like they're doing like, like a cat's cradle with chains. So I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sold on that. All right, we'll just leave it as is. Um, and then finally, we're gonna go in and put some waves down. Uh, so we've got sea waves and we got wave waves. All right. Um, hmm. What are our options for these waves? They look kind of bad, so I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure I'm getting the same effect that I want here. So let's go to bigger waves, and we want some that. Hmm, that's kind of cool, but not exactly what I was hoping for. I mean, it causes disturbance in the water, but not like the right kind of disturbances in the water. Let's see. I want it to feel like the waves are kind of crashing against the fingers in addition to everything else that they're trying to do. Alright, so maybe that'll work. I'm just going to keep piling these waves around the, the fingers. There we go. This should actually be on this side, though, because of the motion of the ocean, as it were. There we go. Alright. We got that. Yeah, that's kind of working. Alright. And then over here, we would rotate these around. Same idea. just kind of creating like the sense that the ocean is being pushed and moving but also smacking up against these giant stone hands I don't know 
That's what I'm trying to go for. I, I don't know if we're getting that effect or not, really. Uh, let's see. But I guess it's a map that we needed, and now we have it, so that's all that matters. All right. Get him there. All right. So we can deal over here, kind of have the waves moving in that general direction. All right. Um, yeah, I think it sells the general idea of what we're going for. There's a whirlpool. It's dragging everything down the side of it. Um, I'm okay with it. Go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Ooh, that's really big. Uh, let's see what we can do with that. I like that because that's a kind of adding sort of the um, depth that we were looking for before with the uh, coloration. Yeah. I mean, it's not natural. It's not really what it would look like, you know, for real. But it kind of gives like that cool impression. So I'm kind of into it. Yeah. Oh, we could put more waves down inside to really exaggerate that you are sailing down a funnel almost. Oh, shit. That's a cool idea. All right. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm into that. All right. That's looking pretty good. Okay, um, I think that's good. So we'll save it out. And then we'll take it over to Photoshop and do a little cleanup. And so that'll be done. So hey, uh, we still got Island of Time to do. So we got Island of Time and a couple of things to do for Typhon the Maw. Um, whatever they decide to do, unless they decide to do Island of Time, uh, we have everything covered for tonight. If they decide to do Island of Time, um, I can always just try to dissuade them. Be like, hey, Island of Time is really tough. Uh, because Island of Time is really tough. Um, Island of Time is also very complicated. So um, it's going to be very hard to prep. Let's see. All right, we're going to go ahead and export. And we'll just save it as is. Because it gets really upset when you try to do anything too fancy with it. All right. Let's see. Open this up in Photoshop. Uh, open with Photoshop. I'm not sure the significance of the chains and the hands being like chained across the top. I think it looks cool, but I don't totally understand what's happening there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And let's see, on that new layer, <clears throat> uh, we're going to add some heavy shadows. So I want the heavy shadows to lay across like that. And then under the thingies right there. All right. Okay, so we'll just lower that opacity a little bit. Get that heavy shadow going. That's cool. All right. And then on a new layer, I also want to create that sort of, it's dark down here, but it's also light because of the underworld kind of shining up. So we'll go ahead, lower the opacity way down, but keep that kind of dark. There we go. Nice. Uh, then I guess we could do like a vignette around the outside of the map to kind of draw the focus towards the center. So we'll go ahead and put some dark shadows around the outside. There we go. And lower the opacity on that a little bit. But it's showing you that it is very dark here. That's cool. 
I think we did a good enough job with the lighting down there that we don't need to add any more. But if we did, what we could do is go add a top layer and we could add sort of shining off of bits of the stone hands, I guess, kind of from below. And maybe even the underside of the chains. Which is weird that it's casting shadow, but also being backlit. We'll see if we can kind of make that work. Ooh. That color burn is looking pretty dope, actually. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Um, soft light, a little too subtle. But maybe... It's either soft light or color burn. Uh, I'm going to go with soft light. Uh, it's just not as fun as color burn. All right, we'll go with color burn. Uh, nah, we'll go with soft light. And here's why. We're going to go with soft light, and then we're going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to get our eraser. Uh, let's see. There we go. Get our eraser. We're going to make it... Very soft eraser. We're going to make it a bigger eraser. And we're going to get rid of this extra bits because we just want that cool blue effect on the chain. There we go. Ooh. Damn, that looks cool. All right. So now we have that sort of ominous blue light shining up from the underworld, uh, backlighting the chains a little bit. I like that. I think that looks really cool. All right, um, we'll do this again to kind of highlight some of the waves. So let's see if we could do that. Go. Kind of get that energy from the underworld coming up. All right. Now this, we will also do... Uh, we'll do a color burn on this one. And we'll just lower the opacity a ton. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Okay. Okay. And there we go. That is our Chir Charybdis um, map. I think it's pretty cool looking. Um, yeah. Not bad for less than 30 minutes for a map. All right. So, we'll go ahead and save it out. So, save this. Uh, go ahead and put it in our PDF or PSD folder. And then we will export it. Had my export tool crap out on me the other day. So that's why I am saving before I do the exports. All right. I'm assuming it's going to be okay. And we'll go back in here. <sighs> Alright. So this is in chapter 6. We'll go ahead and make a new folder. And this folder will be called uh, Charybdis. There we go. And in Charybdis we'll go ahead and add um, a tile template. that again and save it and let's go in here and see what we can do all right so we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to our maps nope not our nodes our maps and we'll go to oodle and we'll go to I'm in maps. I go to Oodle. There we go. Go to chapter 6. And this can just kind of exist all by itself. That's fine. Alright. It's only 7.7 .7 megs. Not too bad for a big ass map. Alright. Very cool. And then we'll drag this over. 
points. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make this a 5,000 by 5,000. And let's see, we'll go over to lighting and we will add a little divider here. Cool. And then we'll go ahead and take this and we'll bring this in as well. So let's see, we'll go here. That for downloads. Okay. Right. And just bigger like that. Okay. And hmm, what else can we do? Oh, we're going to go into lights and we'll make a big old light in the center here. And I think there is a swirling light now. Swirling fog? Let's see. Ooh, shit. Um, that is not what I was looking for, but it is very cool. Um, let's see. Energy field? Nope. Uh, black hole? Hmm. Okay, I'm kind of into that. Uh... Roiling mass. Ooh, that's cool. It's a cool like distortion there. Oh shit. Yeah, that looks pretty dope. Um, let's see if we could find something else though. Uh, color shift, simple flash, starlight, mysterious emanation. Oh, all right. That's a little much, but ooh, that's not though. That looks cool. Okay, um, animation speed. Oh man, I wish we could change the direction it was going in. Oh well. Dang, that looks really cool. All right. I like that. All right, and then we'll go here, configure. We'll turn on global illumination. We'll make it a little dark. There we go. Beautiful. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn the grid to like toothpaste blue. Turn it down quite a bit. And overall, I guess we'll lower this to 50 to make this really big. Oh, there we go. Nice. Damn, that's cool looking. Okay. So there we go. Um, I'm digging it. 